A little look at the analysis on this one. Let's start from the top. Let's get these arrows off. And let the game begin. Okay, so. The opponent came with the very strange opening. Pawns pushing down. In my head, I'm thinking just keep it simple. Just develop our pieces, get some of the minor pieces out and because they're losing a tempo in my head i'm thinking they're losing a tempo in terms of developing their minor pieces and getting the key pieces into the game getting them active um owning squares and managing squares so in essence it looks good it looks aggressive you know pushing the pawns but once you've pushed that pawn it can never go back so you, you're creating spaces behind those pawns which are potentially weaknesses but you have to box clever you know some players can play like that and um, mobilize quite nicely with the pawns and um, eventually supporting the pawns so don't take it as red that just pushing the pawns is weak um, if they're weirdly supported somehow then somehow they gain an advantage so you still have to use your smarts against them and uh, the key thing for me is really just getting your pieces out, your minor pieces out as best possible. If I have to pawn push, then I'm hoping that I can pawn push to manage key squares, hopefully get those pawns supported as we're developing in the game. So they bring the knight out, we push the pawn up, looking just to develop our bishop. At this stage, I'm saying don't overextend, don't try and challenge those pawns that I've pushed down just make space now for our minor pieces maybe our major pieces potentially looking after our king as well making sure the king is safe so all those basic elements are what i'm thinking as this opponent has opened up so they've done another pawn, pawn maneuver opening up the bishop so they've only developed one minor piece but as as i said before don't get too hung up about the fact that you know they've not got any minor pieces out there because if you're focused on trying to grab their pawns or block their pawns, you'll kind of work into the same tempo. Gage bar showing it's, it's even Stevens, so it's neither here nor there. So then they bring the bishop through, so they're basically just doing like a nice sombre development. It's minus 0.1, it's neither here nor there, you know, so um, they've not done anything majorly wrong. Even the gauge bar is showing it. They've not done anything majorly wrong with those pawn pushes. But we as humans, we would tend to think, oh, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to play the game. They've just pushed pawns. And then you start overextending because you're thinking that there's a weakness somewhere. So we gently just push forward through the center. As you've noticed, I've not pushed my pawns right up to the center at all in any way shape i'm not overextending in any way i'm just waiting to see what the opponent's wanting to do and the style of play that they are demonstrating as we like to look at the character of the the person that we're playing um it looks to me like they don't want to overextend or maybe they don't have the confidence to work their pieces together We've covered these types of things before in the psychological aspect of, you know, the earlier games that we've shown. Um, 
So all of these form part of the answer process, you know, the answer process we're working on is using that psychology of how we believe the opponent is playing on the board. So hopefully we can use that against them in a sense. It's not 100% proof, but it's a high percentage proof based on my own experience um, playing the game. So we're just playing a little inchy inchy type thing just to see, well, okay, we'll see what you want to do. We believe you don't really know how to play your pieces together. That's what we're believing. So it does another small pawn push. I'm thinking they really do want us to overextend. So we bring our bishop in just nice and steady away, not overextending in any way, shape or form. Still looking for any gaps or spaces that we can potentially manage. So now they've brought the knight out, but again, it's just behind the pawn. Um, maybe looking to champion around here somehow or you know but at the end of the day it's nothing major to us so we just simply push the pawn here maybe just to stop the knight from jumping here if it's got any ideas of that we're then looking again if it does another small tiny move that's not really threatening us at all we're just going to simply push this pawn here we're not going to overextend so they do do a pawn push so we just simply push our h pawn um, no problems there. We're blocking off any potential, sorry, maneuvers here with the knight. So it's all small potatoes, as it's showing the gauge by it's showing it's a draw. So the opponent's not overegged anything. They're not. They're basically saying, "I'm still waiting for you to um, jump in." In my head now, I'm thinking, well, they've potentially lost quite a lot of space management of key squares. especially around the center area they've kind of lost the management of that and that initiative and that's what's going on in the back of my head so again they've brought the bishop through now for a long range attack coming through here which takes a longer time to get into play so i'm fairly happy and comfortable with that so sometimes those little tactics do work my knight manoeuvre here wasn't really attacking anything, it was to gain some sort of reaction from the opponent because we want them to overextend. This knight manoeuvre here I believe was some, si some type of overextension because really what is it attacking? It's doing exactly what my knight is doing here, it's not attacking anything but it's put itself in a weak position so I believe anyway. So we can now attack the knight and grab and we're still on the knight. So our focal point now is um, attacking this area that has now been created from the fault of the knight because the knight has got nowhere to go, it's going back. It's come back around again to attack the pawn but the pawn can yet again still attack. So it's a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. So they're losing the initiative and we're gaining the initiative from that initial knight move of us moving our knight to this precarious same situation here basically baiting the opponent to do something and we did get a reaction which was the knight so now we're winning the initiative so now the opponent is losing tempo having to go back and we're attacking again with the smaller piece on the higher piece so the knight jumps back to the same square which basically is doing nothing for them in my head it's only in my head, you know, um, I don't see the gauge bar during the game. If the gauge bar had gone for White's advantage, I would have still said the Knight's gone back to the place where really it's not got much benefit for it in my eyes. So again, we've lost, the, we've won a key tempo in terms of um, establishing initiative. So the opponent is following our lead at this moment in time. So we grab the pawn. So they decide to capture the rook. I didn't think they were going to do that because in my head I'm thinking, well, we're now going to be owning that file. So the queen grabs. So we are owning that file for a brief moment. So we attack their knight and they decide to attack our um, minor piece with a smaller piece, which is a good touch. And um, we grab the knight. It's a good touch, but it does lose them that ownership of the squares, tempo wise space wise there's a whole heap of things that can go on 
I'm not saying I would have played it perfectly. It's showing that we're out and out winning here. Um, we shall see. So the bishop captures. So we can bring the knight back around again to attack the bishop. Computer doesn't like that move. It's saying there was something better. And it's saying knight takes e3. Because we didn't spot that. And if I was more awake, that that's a beautiful fork, isn't it? Look at that fork on all those pieces there. So all I had was my tunnel vision of when they do do that, then we're going to come here and attack the bishop. So we missed a major opportunity there. So key point to learn, as always, you know, just look up a bit. You know, it's that tunnel vision. We all do it when we're doing our calculations. We focus on, well, X, Y, and Z, da, 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 da. And then we realize afterwards we could have done something even better. Something with gold on it. Rather, I've chosen bronze there. Okay, so we brought the knight down, attacking the bishop. The bishop moves back. Still showing advantage type thing on the computer. So we come now and attack the bishop. Um, one of the key concerns I was having was that maybe the rook was going to come here at some point and pin through to our queen but that didn't happen at this stage so we grab the bishop and the rook captures so now we're x-raying through to the rook with the bishop all simple straightforward stuff and the knight jumps in so we might as well take the knight off the board now i don't want any botheration obviously that's not the best move but we're still feeling fairly comfortable with our position Obviously, we're making it harder for ourselves, so let's have a look at what they're suggesting. C5, and C5 is hitting the knight. Oh, look at that. Is that beautiful? Yeah, hitting the knight. The pawn takes, pawn takes, still hitting the knight. What does the knight do? The knight's going to have to move, and then obviously we've got the pawn on this side here. At least now we've got an idea of things just to be mindful of. We're missing a little bit of gold. We're choosing the bronze um, rather than the gold. But it's still in there. It's still on the podium. So we're not going to lose too much sleep over it. But it's nice to choose the gold. So taking a little bit of a backseat and realistically looking. When time's ticking down though, it's really quite hard to do that. So they capture captures. So now we bring the rook across and looking to basically put a 2 on one maybe onto that pawn. So we bring the queen up with a two on one. So we've got the rook and the queen on the pawn. Queen's also attacking the rook as well. So it's like a double whammy situation. Queen comes down to protect. And this bishop move here, I wasn't too sure what I was doing with that. I did have the idea of bringing the bishop here and attacking their bishop. But I didn't have a little bit of a concern about them coming across here. But... And maybe I shouldn't have been too concerned. Let's have a look at that, see if that would have um, been okay. Just bring the bishop here, attack in there, bishop. And it's saying bishop take the b5. And that should have been okay. So that should have been alright. Would have been even Stevens type situation. It's nothing major. Okay, so we brought the bishop here, and that's given them a little bit of a plus, but it's neither here nor there, really. So the idea being was looking to basically come here, get this queen across here, and get the exchange off here. It was all really basic, simple stuff, but when you're playing a short play game, it's the only picture I could see, really. But then I did have that concern of if they come here, king moved out of the way. Then we move the queen up. Uh, it's not showing that that's a good move. C6. What's, what's C6 all about? Hmm, not sure about that. Okay. Yeah, so if they hadn't moved there. That's what I was thinking of. Thinking they were going to do. And this is saying. Oh, obviously we'll just take it with the thing on the. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Right, so that's not what happened. So we brought the queen up. Does not like the queen move at all. Um, I was fairly happy with it. I thought it was okay. So we're going for the exchange. It's giving them a plus here. So they captured, captured. Right, okay. And then it's gone to minus. It's never here or there again. So it's 
more or less drawish. So we bring the bishop back and we attack the pawn. And now basically this is trying to get an understanding of the pawn situation. So me pushing this pawn was not good. Look at that, out and out winning. So they should have gone rook a2, which is attacking our bishop. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So bishop b5, so getting the bishop out of the way anyway. So I think it did end up here anyway, didn't it? But then if we go there, then his pawn is going to get the pawn. Don't know if different like them apples. Let's see. Is he not just going to take? Or I could even yeah take and then take and then take. Why is it? Hmm. That's interesting. Let me just run through that again. So bishop here. It's not saying bishop take. It's saying rook b three. But it was a positive when it did take it. Well, it's a positive for us. But then, if we took... Ah, it's saying Rook takes the pawn. This is bad. Because that gives them the positive. And the Rook taking the pawn gives us a positive. Yeah, okay. Because he can't take because he loses the Rook. Yeah, alright. Smallest of details. I like that, I like that, I like that. So a bishop here. Doesn't like that. Right, okay, so that's what happened in the game. But then they did their pawn moves as well, so that gave us a bit of a plus. So all these pawn maneuvers here, they're bad for all both of us. Gaze bar just going up and down. <laughs> all right okay right so just for future sense then right yeah what is it saying uh, oh bishop b5 same bishop b5 again yeah okay i need to get that picture in my head that and then we could have taken here because i'm sure I've, i see these positions are quite a bit and the rook can take okay that's in the rolodex Uh, do, 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 do. Yes, B5. Bishop B5 again. Okay, so it was all about Bishop B5 on that one. That's fine. Okay, coming across. I did think if we got the king across, then we should be okay winning some sort of tempo and being able to grab pieces. Yeah, so that was fine. So, yeah, it wasn't as easy as what it looked based on the evaluation. And it could have been done better. There could have been more golden opportunities. But these short play games don't really give you that momentum to get those golden opportunities. Let's go and kick in a longer play game now.
Okay, so that was the long play version after the short play evaluation. So let's have a look at this and see if any gold was taken or were we playing at bronze level. Okay, let's just push through the centre here and let's have a look. So we had a bit longer to think, um, although I still think we moved a little bit quickly. Um, probably move quickly because we felt like they were kind of obvious maneuvers that we were making in order to try and gain some type of advantage but we're doing the evaluation to see if we chose the gold level or if we chose the bronze level or if we chose silver okay so they brought the bishop through so it was a bit of a slow opening for our opponent initially and we're just trying to establish our pieces, get them out. So we've got three minor pieces out at the moment and they've got two. Again, it doesn't matter how many you've got. If, if they're not in the right places, then they're rubbish. So we're doing developing pieces that are doing something. So then the smaller piece attack and the higher piece can't be wrong. But it does give us a bit of space to attack this pawn here. So we've got like a two on one. The only piece that's protecting is this. I did probably think that the port bishop was coming here, so that at least the queen was going to be supporting. So that's how I was hovering over this pawn, so waiting to push here. But they didn't do that. They took a while, and they pushed down. And gauge bar is going crazy for us, so not sure that we chose the best move for crazy as us type thing. I think we captured. It's not dropped too much. Queen comes in for a check and then we go for the exchange. Don't mind not castling here. We're looking to trouble. So the bishop comes through. It looks like it's attacking a lowly pawn. So we get a fork on their rook <coughs> and the king. So we can take. So we're out and out winning at the moment. But just wanting to make sure. There was a bit of a shift. But nothing too major I don't think. So I don't think we need to go back on that. <clears throat> Excuse me, putting checks on the king. Trying to improve the position, so waiting for their rook to come and challenge us, but um the psychological aspect of this rook move here was to entice their rook to come here. Because sometimes players do mirror what you do. You know, so you go here, just like in that previous game where we moved the knight to a non-square and then they move their knight to a non-square um, it can happen you know I was waiting for it and then we would have been able to take with the bishop but obviously they didn't do that they realized that the bishop was actually managing that square so they brought the bishop back 
So I'm thinking, okay, well, if they're going to take, then our knight can take, and then we do have the knight here, and um, it's going to be putting a check on the king, you know, attacking their bishop. So they do actually take, so I'm feeling fairly comfortable. And the rook comes through, and I'm just thinking, well, this is pretty straightforward in terms of the exchanges. It's got a piece under attack already, and if he does attack, then the rook is owning the file. His king is trying to get to our knight to get it off the board. It does have this knight that's got um, a piece attacking it. So we're attacking three pieces of theirs, although they're attacking ours, but in essence, we've got like two pieces attacking. So grab, grab, and at that point, the opponent uh, resigned. So lots of teamwork, lots of focus targeting, and ownership of key files, all basic stuff and having that extra bit of time does obviously give you that um, ability to um, I would say we, we probably did a few silvers in there and um, probably one gold you know with the knight's fork in this situation so that's not too bad evaluation is key for the games if you're wanting to develop and always said that and yeah really at the end of the day if you're playing your smaller games do a long evaluation of the game afterwards to get a basis as to understanding what it, what it is magnified in your shorter game that you will definitely be doing in your longer play games and then try and work out a calculation and strategy to try and get rid of that sort of process it's um you know <laughs> you're never going to get rid of everything playing the short games is definitely not the way to go um, but if you're playing in a longer play game and you do get into time trouble and I've said for years well I've, I don't really get into time trouble but in, in longer play games but only this year I got into not time trouble I was down to one minute and something or something like that and then I was getting down into the seconds and I think if I hadn't practiced blitzy type bullet type stuff you know to get a, a bit of an understanding as to what it is all about i probably would have struggled because i found some half decent positions in order to be able to get a draw against a much higher rated player than myself so to me there is some type of benefit to it but the benefit really is about evaluating those games and then actually learning what it is that you do in a magnified way which is bad and what you do good in a magnified way as well you can see those in the shorter play games that's the only kind of plus ish type thing i can say um, regarding playing the short games other than that it's nice to have in your back pocket simple as that